analyzing my every touch in Sunday League in the hope that I get better. In my last game, I finally ended my goal scoring drought with two incredible, purposeful goals. So going into this game, I was overflowing with confidence, ready to continue my form. Let's see my first touch of the game. That's us, that's us. That boy, Bobby. Back, back. Awesome. Really capitalizing on my momentum. Let's see what I could have done differently. The first thing I immediately mess up is my choice of foot when receiving this ball. As you can see, the most immediate threat to my possession is number 55, who is tracking back here. When I receive this ball from my mid Kirk, I like to take this with my front foot and out directly in front of me. This is serving the ball up on a silver platter. Instead, if I had taken this with my back foot, number 55 would have to cut across my body to try and tackle me. I also should have taken this touch into a different space. Instead of right in front of me, the best place to go with this touch is toward the line, creating more space between him, me, and the ball. We can see that this side is pretty congested, so my options would be either to pass it off to Matias here and see if we can start building a switch, or just cut it back and reset the play by giving it to my right back. But too bad, all you get is this. Next touch. The ball comes all the way out to me on the right side of the box. I proceed to take my touch straight toward the only defender in my tri-state area and break several of my ribs, running straight into him. Brilliant. This is like when a fly ends up in your car and you have all your windows open, but instead of leaving through the four wide open areas, it elects to just bump around everything but the windows. When this ball is coming toward me, I have a couple options. The best option would have been to let this run past me into space, take my touch with my back foot, and start heading toward the goal. I can then pass it off to Lyndon to finish, or take the shot on myself, hoping for either a goal, a deflection, or just a shot on or off target. I'll celebrate either at this point. My second option, which seems to be what I was attempting, was to play this ball first time out to Linden here. However, as you can see, this defender is coming in and blocking that passing lane. A much better choice of a pass would have been to play this diagonally into the box where there is a lot of space allowing Linden to run onto it. All better options than running into my opponent's clothesline. After my teammates glued my ribcage back together, I come back out for my first decent touch of the game. One of their opposing wingers takes a bit of a heavy touch, and I very cutely pluck the ball out of the air back to my right back. Nice. Cute. Unfortunately, we then move from the cute back to the hard to look at. I receive the ball from my mid Kirk and take a decent touch into a good space. I then have the perfect opportunity to split their defense and play this through ball for Matias here, who is very clearly showing me what I need to do. But I decide I don't speak ASL and opt for a more creative approach. Holy shit. I guarantee that this is the first time that this combination of touches has ever been executed in the history of, ev of all things. We're looking at a cutback to tiny baby step overs, to failed pass, to fake pass, to just stopping the ball entirely and just passing it off to someone else. So can't say I'm not unique. The pass I talked about earlier was clearly the best option, not just because it is, but also because the less time the ball is at my feet, the better it is for everyone. Next play, a very similar situation to my second touch from earlier. Ball is played out to me wide, but this time, instead of charging into a brick wall, I do the right thing and let the ball run along into space. However, instead of taking this with my back foot and moving down the line into space, I stop the momentum of the play by taking my touch with the outside of my left, wait a couple seconds, and thread in a beautiful through ball for no one. This was actually a great play. If number 68 on their team forgot what team he was playing for and thought he was one of our strikers. Otherwise, it was ass. Once again, I am falling into the trap of forcing myself to use my favorite foot, even if it means killing the momentum of the play. If I just used my right foot here, I could have taken my touch toward goal and continued following alongside my offensive line. This would then open up the opportunity to square it across goal for one of them to run onto. I also could have just used the outside of my foot to instead take my touch forward rather than across, accomplishing the same thing. Now once I did take this touch going against the run of play, I needed to get my head up to spot the direction of Matias's run, and then just lightly tap the ball into his path and run into space. Oh well. Next play, a throw in. Ball comes out to me. I run toward it, bring it down with my chest, and control it? Nice. Seven games in, and I've finally achieved the bare minimum. Let's see how the rest of this plays out. I end up taking a couple grandma touches, but then play it out to Matias and start running into space. He tries to find me again, but unfortunately just plays the ball behind me, and we lose possession. This was pretty good. I got my head up, 
saw the direction of Matias' run, played the ball into space, and moved into space myself. Not only that, but during the throw-in, I actually ran toward the ball and brought it down as quickly as possible. That's it. I'm officially too good for Sunday League. Pep, I know you're watching. Yes, I'll join Man City and replace Holland. Talk soon. Next touch. Ball is once again played out wide to me. I take an okayish first touch down the line, then take my second to continue my run. I eventually opt out of this approach, and once again cut in to start going toward the middle. I then proceed to once again not get my head up, and just keep running down the middle, eventually passing out to another fictitious teammate out on the wing. I then swing my arm up in disbelief, as none of my teammates magically spawned exactly where I wanted them to be. My vision of the field so good, I'd be seeing into the fourth dimension. Too bad we live in the third dimension, and I'm just simply trash. Let's take a look at what I could have done differently. I begin this playoff right. I move down the line where I have space. However, it seems that I feel very uncomfortable with space, because every time I do the right thing and move down the line, right as all I need to do is take one more touch to beat my defender and be on my merry way, I decide space is kind of cringe, and slow up my pace and begin brute forcing my way through the middle. You know, where all the space isn't. Had I just kept going, I would have once again advanced alongside my forward, and we would have had the opportunity to link up in the box. By cutting in, I'm moving toward where all the opposing players are tracking back to, as well as giving them more time to track back, since I'm slowing down the play. Now, again, when I do choose to do this, I once again miss the obvious pass out to my forward, who is now in a great area, and instead, gaslight myself into thinking I'm Kvarskalia, and that I'm actually about to do something here. Penis. While this next play isn't a touch, I wanted to put it here to show you that referees have unionized into some sort of cabal whose only goal is to prevent me from scoring. My forward John plays a great through ball into the open space. Marco, our other forward, is offside. I, however, am not. And so I turn on my nitrous boost and break the sound barrier getting to the loose ball. Unfortunately, one of the opponents yells, Stop the top! Thank you! And so the referee legally had to call the offside, regardless of the fact that I was the one running onto the ball and not Marco. The elite win again, and the proletariat hero walks away dreaming of what could have been. This next play also isn't a touch, but I just wanted to show this as an educational source of what it looks like for a human being to transition from a canter to a gallop. That's right, like a horse. It was a horse joke. I didn't know humans were capable of this. Here's our goalie doing push-ups because he's bored out of his mind, and back to the touches. Touch, try to support him. Great. Maybe I should have stuck to the galloping. What I should have done differently here is do all of this, uh, but better, and with the result being a goal and not whatever this was. Here, Matias plays a great ball out to me on the wing. I finally do the correct thing and just continue my run down the line with a nice touch with the outside of my foot. I then notice my teammates have arrived in the box, so I cut the ball back and prepare my cross. I end up setting in a beautiful ball straight to my forward Marco, who is completely unmarked. He hits a stunning volley, but unfortunately, it goes straight at the keeper. This was our best chance yet, and this was by far my best play of the game. I continued the momentum of the play, I only slowed it down when my teammates were in position, and I crossed in a dangerous ball. Exactly what a winger should do. Not the silly stuff that I've been doing. Here we have a nice little interception that I play straight to my forward John. Just wanted to include this to show you all I have a semblance of defensive instincts, but also to highlight a skill I feel a lot of people overlook, and that's to consider where your interceptions go. A lot of the time, I feel like all I think about is get ball back, but not always where does ball go when get ball back. So, just something to think about. Finally, we move on to our first goal of the game. Our mid Matias plays a beautiful chip over to our forward Linden, who does a great job to control this with his chest. He then sends the ball out to our other forward John, who brings it down with his knee, and then places a great shot into the bottom corner, putting us in the lead at 1-0. And surprise, surprise, I was nowhere to be seen. All right, back to me. My center back Andy plays the ball out to me. I have a defender on my back, so I take my touch into space. I then see number 55 tracking back toward me, so I start going toward the line and turn myself around, putting my body in front of him and the ball. I then keep going until finally playing the ball out to Rafa, who plays out a through ball that I am unable to get to. This was a decent play. My biggest note here is that I wish I had continued this run for the through ball. I did the right thing and bent my run as to stay on side, and could have peeled off right as he played this ball, but this team had been playing offside traps all game, so I just assumed I was offside here, which... I wasn't, so 
Kinda looking like an ass out of you and me right now. Next play. The ball is thrown out to me by our keeper following a throw-in. I begin to run down the field, but quickly slow down once I see a single opponent in my way. I then once again start to cut in, and again, instead of passing it off to one of my teammates, begin dribbling into the center, letting their numbers get back. I then eventually pass it off to my other winger, Anthony, and the attack fizzles out. This was a major counter-attacking opportunity. We had good numbers forward and were occupying good positions. The biggest thing I needed to do here was release much earlier. Right around here, I should have played the ball out to Linden, who was in a great pocket of space, past his marker, and able to continue playing this forward. Again, not playing this pass and instead slowing it down kills our forward momentum and also allows their midfield to get back into position. Good job, asshole. The next play is how we get our next goal. Matias plays the ball out to our other winger, Rafa. He takes a great touch to break this defender's ankles and then takes a fantastic second touch to start going down the line. He eventually outmuscles and outpaces his defender and starts sprinting toward the goal. A defender begins to close down on him, which is when he chooses to shoot and places it perfectly in the bottom right corner. What an insane solo effort. Also, just to note, yes, this is the same dude that was goalie first half doing push-ups. Fuck, he's cool. We then come to my biggest chance of the game. I begin making a run, and Linden sends in a beautiful through ball. I begin to chase it down, but then take a nightmare first touch, and then follow that up with an even worse second touch, which goes miles away from me. I believe that if I just put my head down and run as dramatically as possible, that that will eliminate all wind resistance, and I will make it to this ball in time and score. Unfortunately for me, the laws of physics held strong, and I didn't get even close. Here the ball is played out to me on the wing. I notice that this side of the pitch is really congested, so I blast the ball out to the other side and nicely find my other winger, Alex. This was a decent decision, albeit a little risky. And that's the game. We win 2-0, but I unfortunately did not suddenly turn into a goal-scoring god. That last game might have been my peak. Keep watching to find out. Please subscribe, and let's get better together.